Hi, I'm Owen from Lotus Kent. And this is our second user's guide on our YouTube channel. This is our Lotus Electra S demonstrator. So I'll go through some specs to start off with. This car is an Electra S, it's in Kaimu grey, 23 inch grey diamond turned 10 spoke wheels, red calipers. The car's got the gloss black exterior and interior trim pack. It's got the Jasper interior option, five seat and the comfort seat pack. And it has the highway assist pack, Alcantara steering wheel, and it also has the standard glass roof. So we're going to start off with locking and unlocking the car. All the lecturers will come with two key cards and one key fob. To unlock and lock the car with the key fob, there is a singular black button. You press that once, that will unlock the car. You press it again, and that will lock it. There is a walk up unlock feature inside the car, which I will go through later on, which allows you to walk up to the car. The car would unlock as you get close to it. When you lock the car again with the key fob, all you do is rub your hand over the handle and the car itself will lock and it drops down. When you're using the key card, there is a Lotus triangle on the B pillar. You take the card, very much like a contactless payment, you cover that, mirrors and the door pulls come out, the car is then unlocked. When you want to lock the vehicle, cover that triangle again, mirrors fold in, door pulls go away and the car is then locked. Moving around to the rear, we're going to go through the boot, opening, closing, and how to deal with the air suspension in the back. So starting off, opening and closing the boot, just above the three on my number plate here is the boot handle, power tailgate to lift this up. Inside the boot, you have a parcel shelf, and this doesn't lift up or down, this simply pulls straight out and slots straight back in again. There is the front half of the parcel shelf, that you simply twist and untach from either side, and then the, that comes out as well. This is quite a high load lip. If needed, all electrons are standard air suspension. There are two buttons up here. If you need to drop the air suspension, you press the bottom one, that will drop the rear. If I bring it back up again, you press the top. Underneath, there is a latch in the middle. It lifts a flap. Under that flap, a small amount of storage where your toolkit, your warning uh, triangle, tow hook, and your what locking wheel nut and inflation kit are under there. Shutting the boot, there is a button at the top which you press and the boot drops. I'll take this just to pre-warn everybody, these cameras do not have a self-wash system. As we come to the winter months, these will get dirty. Every now and then, my camera's just over the seven here. Give that a wipe over to make sure you can use the cameras to the best ability. Now we've done the rear, I'm going to show you through the frunk. To open the frunk, there is a catch on the passenger side which you pull twice. That will pop the frunk. There is no latch underneath. You simply just lift this up. This then reveals a plastic cover which you lift up. And inside here there is a space, a small space. We use it for our cables. It's completely down to you what you want to use it for. When you come to shut this, there is a little handle latch. Click that shut. This bonnet has two latches either side. When you shut this, put your hands just above the swage lines, push down hard, and the bonnet will shut. So moving on to the charging port, opening, closing, and plugging in. So opening the charge port, when the car is unlocked, all you simply do is push the charge port and it will open. You can also open it from inside the car. I'll go through that later on. Now this is open, I've got the charger, charging cable out of the front. I simply pull the cover off the end. Big end goes in, into the car and the small end goes into the charger. If you've got a tethered charger that's already got a cable in, you won't have to worry about the small end. All you'll have to do is plug the big end in. Once it goes in and it's charging, this white light will go green. That means the car is charging. This will lock in and nobody can pull this out. Once the car is finished charging and you want to you unlock it, it unlocks the charging cable. Simply a pull out and simply just press the button at the top or simply push the charging port back in. Just as a side note before we move to the interior of the car, there are cameras everywhere on this car. I showed you the rear, there is also one directly on the front, and I've got one on the mirror, one in front of the mirror, one down here, same both sides. Again, as mentioned on the rear, as we get to the winter months, it's grit on the roads, it gets muddy, these cameras are going to get dirty. Just every now and then, if you start to recognise that they're a little bit gruddy, just wipe them down and you'll be back to full ability again. So I'm just going to mention the LiDAR sensors on this car. 
we've got one at the top up here, which we've just engaged. There's one at the back. These are in the wings here. These will never pop out until the higher levels of self-driving are made legal in the UK. These are LiDAR sensors. They will pop out and they will, they will appear and disappear. Um, however, these are for the higher levels. I believe we are level two approved in the UK. These are for higher levels, so you may not see these pop out for a while. So moving on to the interior, basic movements with the seat. This is a comfort seat pack car, which has the extra adjustments on the seats. So your normal base models, um, standard five seat configuration cars who do not have the comfort seat pack will not have these two black buttons that are here. Let's move the seat round. It's pretty standard electric seat stuff. Your flat one here, horizontal, that goes forwards and backwards. The back half here will physically lift the seat up and down. The front half will tilt the base of the seat up and down as well. The vertical one, that will move the backrest of the seat. If you have a comfort seat pack or executive seat pack car, you can push this up and down and the headrest itself will move up and down. So you've got adjustable headrest with a comfort or executive car. You've got a lumbar support button here which will go up and down, in and out of your back. These two black buttons on comfort seat pack cars, the front one, that will do this front section of the seat here, will move it in and out under your knee, underneath your knees. The top one here will actually do the bolsters at the top of the seat and will turn it more into a bucket or a wider based seat, however you want that for. If you do have a comfort seat or an executive seat pack car, in the middle of the lumbar support button, there is a massage button. Press that once to turn on, press it again to turn off. So on the, on the door, opening and shutting the door, there is a big door release button on every single one. There is also a manual door release at the bottom here, which you simply just pull up and that manually releases the door. On the driver's door, you have a boot button. So you press and hold that, the boot will open, press and hold it, it will shut. There are four window buttons, as you'd expect. There is a mirrors fold in button. Uh, and you press that again to fold it back out again. Below the mirrors folding in button, there are two child lock buttons. This will allow you to independently child lock each window and each side. Make sure you double check which ones you've pressed uh, as we get on the accent, you press that and lock it back doors. So starting off with steering wheel controls. In order to move the steering wheel forward, backwards, up and down, on the left side of the wheel, there is an electric toggle, which you simply just pull in either direction to move it in, out, up or down. On the back of the steering wheel, you have two paddles. These are split, they are actually four buttons, two at the top, two at the bottom. On the left hand side, that will adjust your, the strength of your regenerative braking. Click it up and that will increase the regen strength. Click it down and that will decrease it into off completely. On the ribbon in front of you, there is a small lightning bolt which will have either off, one bar, two bar or three bars. That will give you the increased strength in the regen. The right hand side adjusts your drive mode. So the first click will actually bring up the drive mode menu on the screen. Second click actually starts to cycle through some drive modes. So you can go up into sport or individual, or you can go back down through sport, tour, range, and off road. If you have an R or have a dynamic handle impact, you will have a track mode with a launch control as well. This car does not have that, so I can't show you through that at the moment. I'm going to bring it back into tour. On the wheel itself, you have cruise control and speed limiter buttons on the left hand side, and you have volume, infotainment, and mirror adjustment on the right. The left hand side, you simply click the left or the right to change between speed limiter or cruise control. When you want to set that, you set it by pushing it in on the center, moving it up and down to adjust the speed. The left hand side inside button is distance. So you click it up and that will increase the distance on the adaptive cruise, pushing you back from the car in front pulling it down that will decrease the distance and bring you closer to the car in front the right hand side you have left and right for channel or song up and down for volume in you press the middle one to play or pause the inside buttons if you push down it brings the voice control system up and you can give it voice commands if you lift up that will give you a menu which gives you heads up display left mirror and right mirror you press into whichever mirror you want and you go left right up or down to adjust the mirror. Once you're happy, you click select. So starting the car and centre console buttons. When you have the key card, the card simply just goes on the wireless charger. You pull it back into drive and you see the D is lit up. Forward into reverse and the R will light up as will the toggle. You can lightly click it back into neutral. 
or you simply press the big P and that puts the car back into park. Hazards are on the right hand side. These bits here, these are your climate control, so these are your temperature up, temperature down on either side. These will also impact, so it will go red and blue for up and down, hot and cold on the ambient lighting. Automatic, the auto button there is for your fan speed. Front and back windows, lock and unlock and glove box opening. When you come to these cup holders, all you do is simply push them in. They click in at the bottom. On the inside where my finger is here, there is a button. Press that button and the cup holder lifts back up again. If you have the key fob and not the key card, once you are in the car, you do not need to do anything with the key. You simply jump in, pull it back into drive. The car then lights D up and you crack on and drive. And of course, if you want to go into reverse, you do that as well. So we're going to start on the central screen and the infotainment system for the Electra. There is a lot to go through in this. This section is going to be quite long and I will try to segment it out. But I just want to make sure that you get a good view of everything that you can do on the car. So starting off, this is your home page. This is the Lotus Garage, so you can see the little car is highlighted. That lets you do things like unlock and lock the car, open the charge port, mess around with the spoiler, open the boot. If you have the intelligent glass roof, there will be an option as well to adjust the intensity of that roof how clear it is, how opaque it is, there will be an option included in there. This car does not have that, so it doesn't have that here. The sat-nav, now every time you, you start the car and you put it in drive, the sat-nav will come up. Now this will give you a split screen. You have one half, which is your sat-nav. The other half gives you a positioning on the road. will give you uh, traffic cones, people, motorbikes, cyclists, etc. It's quite a good um, little view of what's around you. When you go into cruise control, this will also start to light up and do some certain things as well. If I scroll this across here and go full screen for the sat-nav, I've got a few different bits and pieces that I can do. So, I can change orientation, I can find charging ports and bits and pieces, and I can go into satellite view. So, for example, I can use that there to, in, in the minute it's not loading because I'm inside the showroom, it's got no signal, but this will be a Google Earth style ma um, maps. Sat nav wise, once this is all set up here, I've got loads of settings and bits and pieces. So routing, guidance, speed, parking, all of those bits and pieces I can do on here. And I've also got the ability to deal with charging. So range support, I have auto add charging, low power alert, I can set comfort zones, so I can get, I want, if say I want to get to a destination with 30% charge, I can do that. Uh, it can allow me to do that uh, by picking a certain charge point. Again, upon reaching a charge station, I want to be at 10, 20, 30% charge. At a charging station, I can target 80, 90, 100% charge, and I can set my own setup time. So I can set up to 10 minutes of setup time, and that will give me a complete destination, um, complete destination time. Charge speed, again, I can untick, I can tick and untick what chargers that I actually specifically want with charge speed. And providers, I can add providers into here, maps and bits and pieces I can also do. So actually setting a destination in this, in this sat nav is press the little search button here. You then go into search here and at the moment the, the car's offline so it may pull these, it may not. But let's say for example... I do a, let's say I want to go to TN22-6, so we'll see if it can pull something up. So this is in this case, let's say we do this here, we'll just use what it's come up with here at the moment. All I do on here, it will then give me nearby places, it will give me routes and different options. Uh, it will then also say I want to do this one, I will click go, and that cracks on and that does its thing. You can also send destinations to the car via the app. Um, but I'll cover that later on in a different video. The end trip button is just on here and that clears it all off. You do also have the sat nav destinations and everything on the heads up display. So that will all come up with all the directions, everything will come up on there. Clearing down out of the sat nav, so we just go back into the My Garage. Along the bottom here, you have the parking. So you press the little camera button and that brings the camera up. It will automatically defer to the front. If I go into reverse, it will give me the rear. 
if I go into drive, it flicks it back into the front. Now there is absolutely nothing you can do with these. You can't spin this around, you can't do anything with it, but it's a very, very high quality camera. Uh, you get really, really good quality pictures. Gives you a good idea of how to park it. Of course, when it's pouring with rain and there is grit, sand, all the bits and pieces on the road, these car cameras will get covered um, in road grime and they do need wiping off every now and then, but that's the only downside to them. To get down and away from the parking, I simply swipe down like an iPad. I've then got phone here, which will bring up any phone menus and bits and pieces. Along the left is radio. So I've pressed into here. This is the default radio side of things that will come up. You then have USB, Bluetooth, any bits and pieces that you may have come up. And the bottom one here goes into sound. Now I'll go through this section in a second. So we'll go back and out of that for the moment. Into radio, all I do up the top here, that will simply let me go through all the radio stations that I've got. Say I want to set one as a favourite, all I do is click on to that same station. If I can get out of it here, there we go. And you simply tap the heart and that has now favourited that radio station. As I go into favourites at the top here, you can see that the favourites is now there. Press the heart and that gets rid of it as well. Again, any pairing or bits and pieces come up, that will all be up there. And again, you simply just swipe down to get rid of that. This little squared one here is the apps. So you have media, which we've just seen, phone, which linked off the bottom, any messages, any help, Lotus apps. Now that is for the app store with it built into the car. That will have games, uh, infotainment bits and pieces, loads of other stuff. As time goes, more and more bits will be uploaded to that. Charging, now I can go into charging here, and this is currently trip computer. It'll give you your total time, total mileage. It will give you what you've used, all the bits and pieces. It will also let you set charge limit, which you can just grab and move about, and that will let you set total charge limit between 50 and 100%. You can set max current for AC charging as well if you'd like. And again, you simply just grab the top, swipe down out of the way. Parking, which we've done here, and user's manual, so that will load up and give you all the user's manual bits and pieces uh, that's actually built into the car. Again, swipe down to get away from that. Along the top, you have volumes, so any volume for anything. You have media, nav, and ringtone. You have any notifications, a Bluetooth hub. You have your air quality inside. This is for Electra S, Electra R, or any base models optioned with the air quality. You then have any connections, so when you have your 4G, your 5G, Wi-Fi, any of those bits and pieces. This little orange one here is just to say that there is currently a card or keys or any metal objects on the wireless charger, which is just below the screen down here. For example, I have the key card sat on there at the moment, and that is why that is telling me that's come up. I've then got the clock here. I have a mute and unmute button at the top, and then the little person, that is for profiles. So you can have up to six profiles and save those in, and also log into an account on here as well if needs be. Moving into the climate control, you can, as mentioned before, you do have tactile buttons just in front of the blue light here. I can't quite frame them at the moment. You can simply just tap up uh, and tap down to do the temperatures. And again, you'll see the colors changing on this light here as I do that, or you have those tactile buttons. If you tap on the actual number, that will bring the climate control up. You can turn the air quality system on at the top here. You can control front, rear, you get your driver's seat massage. So if you have the comfort seat pack or the executive seat pack, then you can have the driver's and the front passenger's massage system. They will currently, if you do not have the comfort seat pack, this will still come up. However, this will grade out. So your section here, massage, where the start is, that will be grayed out and you cannot start the massage. Settings, so you can turn on to auto start the steering wheel heater. You can have the driver's seat heating, driver's seat ventilation. Again, Comfort Seat Pack has got these, and you can have this total times, cabin overheat protection, in-air cabin monitoring, and front windscreen monitoring as well. In the front, it's all pretty self-planetary. Um, you've got the fan speed along the bottom, on and off, heated and cooled seats on the bottom side. On the driver's side, there is a steering wheel button as well, so that will do the heated steering wheel. You have your different vents, you have your different venting side of things here, and again, eco, auto fan speeds, front and rear windows, and bits and pieces there. 
rear climate can also be controlled from the front and it's very very similar to the front so if I turn this on you can turn the fan speeds down so I'll turn this down to one for example on each one I've got vents I've got heated and cooled rears so you would typically tend to use this if the rear screen is child locked we'll show you how to do that in just a second so that kind of clears through the climate control we are kind of running through this quite quickly uh, otherwise this video is going to be an hour and a half long so now I'm going to go through the pairing of a phone for Bluetooth connectivity. I'm going to use an iPhone because I currently run one, so I know how these work. And Android works very, very similar. Right at the top here, you have a Bluetooth logo. And I have my settings open at the moment for my Bluetooth. I tap the Bluetooth logo. That will bring up available devices the car can find. But also on my phone, I have Lotus. So I can tap into Lotus here. This will start to do the pairing. It's now asking me for a code, which I'm going to say yes and pair to myself. I'm going to allow my contacts and my favourites to sync through, and I'm now done with my phone. This can go away and out of the way. And you can see here I'm paired for phone and, and for music as well. Now when I go into the phone section, I'm not going to go into that because I've got numbers and bits and pieces, but when I go into the phone section that will bring it all up. If I go into the music section now, so into media and into Bluetooth, so at the moment, you can see this has changed slightly. I've got no playable content at the minute. That's because I've got nothing engaged physically on my phone at the moment. As soon as you start engaging those bits, so through Spotify, through any of those bits and pieces, it does all come up through here and it runs through as you'd expect. Swiping this down takes us back to my garage and then we will go through the settings section. Moving on to the settings section. You simply press the cog, and that will bring up the settings. This is currently on the sound one, so that was the last one I was on off the back of the media. But to start off at the top, you have vehicle, light, drive mode, safety, sound, display, account, privacy, and system. Starting off with vehicle, you can scroll up and down with all of these screens here and just run up and down. But at the top, you can turn off, walk up, turn on or off, walk up, unlock. You can turn on or off the auto close windows unlock. The two-step unlock. Now that is to just unlock the driver's door first, second press unlocks every other door. Reduced guard, what that tends to do is that will disengage the interior lock, so that means that when you lock the car, it won't alarm if somebody is sat inside. Scrolling down into drive control, you have auto hold, hill descent control, electronic parking brake, and your traction control off. Again, if you have the intelligent glass roof, there will be a, an extra section in this page somewhere that says uh, oh, uh, it says intelligent glass roof, auto transparency on or off. Scrolling down again, the tyre pressures and bits and pieces. At the minute this car's not moved for a while so it's still working out what's going on. But as you scroll down you'll see your tyre pressures appear here. Windscreen maintenance, now what that does is you press that, will move the screen, move the steering wheel, um, steering wheel, the wipers, sorry, move them halfway up the screen so you can change the blades. Jack mode will mean you can jack the car up as well, so it will stop the alarm going off from bits and pieces like that. You can turn mirror tilt when reversing on or off, and you can turn that to just the left or the right, um, or both of those. You can turn the welcome show, so when you unlock the car, the spoiler will go up and down, the lights will flash, it will do a little sort of welcome show for you. And then wireless device charging, so where this is orange up here, if I turn this off, this is basically now saying that this you this wireless charger is now turned off so you can use the card key or use it as a storage tray that sort of thing is completely down to you light that's for your ambient lighting so you can see across the top here and down here you've got this blue light so i can go into here and i can change the color of that and you can see that just changing on the screen as i mess around with that there so that just chops and changes depending on the color you can then change the brightness of that you can have it so that it responds to climate control inputs battery charge or incoming calls Adaptive front lights, now that was just so that they move and they adjust accordingly to where you go. Tourist mode is if you're going across, say, from the, from the UK into France and they are a different side of the road, this will help adjust those headlights for you. Drive mode, now you have different drive modes. Again, you can do this off the steering wheel with the clickers on the right-hand side, or you can go into up into sport, individual, tour, range, or off-road. If you have an R, there is track at the top. Now, individual, that gives you a load of extra options you can save. So, tour, sport, suspension, ride height, power, steering, alert braking, active rear spoiler, all those bits can be adjusted. 
safety so that is to put this back into tour quickly so safety this is where you have your lane keep assist your auto speed limit alarm you can open and close the lidar with this one and um, with the s model you have also got the ability to turn these off so personally every time i get in the car i turn these off um, and i put the speed limit one onto visual the that's personal preference but of course this is just what i do you will need to do this every time you get in the car uh, it is a eu law that they have to make sure that it's on every single time you get in the car open and self-clean for the lidar all these active safety bits you can turn on and off autonomous emergency braking collision warning all the bits and pieces you need and then the front passenger airbag can be turned off right at the bottom of safety into sound now you can change how the sound is mapped so source stage or spatial and there is a little bit of a description to each one under there there is no equalizer with this so you cannot play around with your bass your mid your treble it's only these sections here that you can change on here and again noise compensation noise reduction and nav volume you can change all of these here and all of those bits are all on there display settings so you can turn the display off you can put cleaning mode on or off you can lock the rear display so the rear screen if you want to turn that off completely you simply do this here so you tap that button and that screen will be redundant and not used for the moment cabin screen and buttons so that is for that's going to be for your brightness heads up display and again adjustments now snow mode for the heads up display now that what that will do is that will turn the heads up display from a bright white to a sort of crisp blue so if the, if the road is white in front of you you can still see the heads up display account so at the minute there's nothing paired to this there's no network on this car so this is where you would scan a qr code privacy you can activate your lotus connectivity or share data for product improvement and then system you can go all the way through here change date formats time formats check for updates network resets all those bits and pieces as well but other than that that is a run through of your infotainment system on the lotus electra so showing you through the rear infotainment screen on the Lotus Electra. This is a five seat configuration car. So the screen, as you can see, is mounted to the back of the center console in this vehicle. When you have a four seat car, the screen is mounted in the middle of the center console between the two rear seats. This has a few bits and pieces you can do on the screen, starting off with seat at the top, quick access and sound. This is all part of this cog down here, the settings menu. Now you also have a little moon button down here, which when you press the moon button, turns the screen off and you simply tap back to bring it back on again. In quick access, there is also a setting for an automatic off. So you can have that so that after five minutes, 10 minutes, or you can also set never. The screen, if you don't touch it, will disappear and turn off. There is a brightness logo, a little scroller here on the quick access. If you have an intelligent glass roof, and this car does not, the intelligent glass roof will actually be able to be controlled in the back here as well. So as you do the slider on the intelligent roof, it will uh, dim and go, it will go clear or go opaque uh, accordingly. Into seat here, so left adjust and right adjust. Now they adjust to move the backrests on the rear seats. So you can see here, I now have a backrest forward and backwards adjustment for both sides. I have a front passenger, so when this screen is all working here, I can actually adjust physically where the front passenger seat is. This is to allow me for extra leg room um, behind the front passenger. Moving up into the climate. So I simply tap any of those temperatures. To change the temperature, you simply just tap on. And just like in the front, you have the red and the blue little lights come on, depending on whether you're going up in temperature uh, or down. So fan speed is on these little autos here. So I've got it set to auto on this one, but if you want, you can literally just press up and down and that will do its thing there as well. The main power on, power off um, button in the middle. This car is a comfort seat pack car. So we do have the heated seats and the cooled rear seats as well. I've pointed them the opposite, but you have heated and cooled in the rear and that's controllable here. You do also have the vent controls. So whether it's coming out of the back this vent here or it's coming out from underneath the seat down here as well to move the vents just like in the front you grab the grab the vent and you just sort of move it around so you can see it moving there with my finger if i want to close this vent off all i do is double tap it and that will close that vent 
double tap it back again and that covers back on into the sound section so this will actually start to play any music um, any connections any bits and pieces uh, that you may have this is where you can control what's playing and what's not and there is a volume scroller down here so I'll go back to the main page on here which is the seat settings and that is the rear screen on the Lotus Electra so that was a detailed run through in how to use a Lotus Electra obviously limited by spec on this car went through as much as I possibly could if you've got any questions or you're struggling with your own Electra and you can't work out what something does please don't hesitate to give me a shout uh, if you're interested in a Lotus Electra we do currently have a demonstrator uh, we do have a few cars available as well for relatively quick delivery any questions give me a shout my name's been Owen you can find me at Lotus Kent